Well, to those of you who know, or maybe some of you don't know yet, a couple of months ago on May 8, we lost Ray Scott, the godfather of bass fishing all over the world. He's the man responsible for everything we have today. He was 88 years old. At least he died peacefully in his sleep. Now I just want to do a little tribute to the man I grew up watching on TV all the time. Ready to run and gun? It's time for Blast Off. Let's go. Hey guys, Ty here with you. Welcome back to Bassman 101. Man, when I was a kid growing up, Bassmaster magazines, Bassmaster TV show, all that, man. Ray was a colorful guy. Super nice guy. And I just I used to love just just watching him. I mean, he was he was the MC of all the MCs. Nobody will ever touch Ray Scott. I mean, that man, he's he was something else. But people don't understand or even realize um, everything Ray Scott did. You know, um, one of the things I'm I'm proud of is able to get a chance to fish tournaments later in life, and you know, growing up always wanting to fish them. Uh, you know, it's, that was just something I always wanted to do, and eventually, you know, got the Virginia State Federation, which that means a lot to me. So, hey, I gave it a shot, right? You know, um, people don't realize that some people grow up wanting to do this for a living. And Ray Scott made that possible. Um, you know, he founded the very first professional bass circuit. And the tournament trail, which he started in 1967, which Bill Dance caught the very first bass in a professional tournament on a blue flip tail worm. Go Bill! <laughs> but nah. Um, you know, the following year, he went ahead and founded the Bass Angler Sportsman Society, which is pretty much the largest organization. Actually, it is the largest organization. You know, because of the fishing tournaments, uh, you know, they were starting to get more numerous and more numerous. And because Ray did all this and started all this, um, there were rapid advancements in like bass boats, outboards, fishing tackle, lures, electronics. I mean, everybody was trying to get the edge on basically professional fishing. Um, nobody's really ever done this before. So, um, you know, people were purchasing this stuff left and right because they saw the pros using this stuff, whether they went to a tournament to see them or they read about it or whatever, but people were buying this stuff up. And the finishing industry now is around $125 billion a year. That's crazy. But that's Ray Scott. Ray Scott was behind all of that. Not to mention, if it wasn't for professional bass fishing that Ray Scott created, you wouldn't eventually have Bill Dance Outdoors. You wouldn't have uh, Jerry McInnes. You wouldn't have Jimmy Houston, Rio Breckenridge, Roland Martin, Hank Parker. You know, look at all these guys that had TV shows. Babe Winkleman. You know, um, in fishermen. You know, a lot of people don't realize, but Al Linder used to fish the circuit back in the day. Um, you wouldn't have Bass Pro Shops. Johnny Morris used to be a competitor back then, too. A lot of you guys don't know that. Um, he basically ran a tackle shop out of the back of his dad's liquor store. And that's, that's how Bass Pro Shops got started. Um, it's, it's, that's a weird story, but that's, that's how it happened. So, 
he starts the he starts BASS, and in order to serve the members, he put out the Bassmaster magazine, um, and it would eventually end up going to six hundred fifty thousand homes. That's pretty big. And don't forget, in nineteen eighty four, he launched a Bassmaster TV show on TNN. And that was with the creative editor, Bob Cobb. Uh, he used to also do some MCs at the tournaments, too, whenever Ray Scott didn't do it. Uh, but it had one million viewers weekly on Nashville Network. And it was the longest-running, uh, probably most-watched fishing show in TV history, you know, next to, like, Bill Dance or Roland Martin. Um, but that's a lot of viewers per week. That's not a bad deal for an insurance salesman. You know, that's what he did. He got a degree, and then uh, he sold insurance for about 10 years, quit his job, started a professional bass fishing circuit. How crazy is that? But think of all the things that, that, uh, that Ray Scott has actually done, and people don't realize Ray Scott was behind it, such as catch and release. Now, he didn't invent catch and release, but he promoted catch and release. And it took a while for it to catch on, but people started catching on to it. He was um, he was uh, one of the one of the biggest people behind the Clean Water Act of 1972. Uh, I think he had like 200 different lawsuits all over the country uh, to get clean water from you know from people polluting it. Um, he also did the uh, sport fish rest, uh, restoration amendment back in 1984, which was a tax put on fishing tackle so the state fishery agencies can have money to keep the waters clean and to help with stocking programs. BASS taxing themselves, but that's what he did, and that's why we pay a little bit more in taxes on fishing tackle because of Ray Scott. Now everybody's going to think, well, this is more money. But it actually does go to state agencies strictly for stocking programs, wildlife management, things like that. That's what he wanted to do. And Bass members were behind it. Nobody complained about it because we knew it was going to get used properly. He was also a huge proponent on boating safety. He was actually behind, uh, I think back in the 90s, he was behind a, a, a bill in Alabama that you actually had to have a written test and a license to drive a boat. I think sometimes you ought to have an IQ test too because jet skis are, are number one. Your IQ drops to five when you get on a jet ski. Uh, or even a ski boat. I'm not even going to go there. I grew up on a lake. I've seen it all. And, you know, uh, it, he did a video series back around 2000 on how to literally build a pond, how to build a mini lake, and the resources to use for it and everything else. I mean, Ray Scott could build some places. He could build some lakes and ponds. He knew how to do all that. But that's all I have, guys. I just wanted to give you know my thanks to Ray Scott on what he has done. Look at all the companies that we have today. You know, it's, it's crazy, and if it wasn't for Ray Scott, starting professional bass fishing we wouldn't have near 10 percent what we got today and that's that's the truth you know um but again like i said you know to me bass was good up until 97 and that's pretty much when ray, when ray scott had it out with the investors and ESPN and everything else and said, I'm out of here. And, uh, you know, he sold bass in 86, but he was still, he was still behind the scenes. He made sure everything still ran right. He still emceed all the tournaments, everything else. You know, the Bassmasters Classic was his baby and he was there every single year for the Classic and made sure the magazine still held up to its standards and everything else until 97 when he just had it out with them. And I said, that's, that's it. And, you know, you could tell with the magazine and everything else, it all went downhill. That's when loopholes started popping up everywhere. That's when embezzlement started popping up everywhere with, uh, with federations around the states. 
I know the federation I was in was there was some serious embezzling going somewhere because there was no money involved. You had to pay it, but you never got it back. You know, if Ray Scott was still in charge, that wouldn't have happened. But that's another story. I just want to put my two cents out there and say, Ray Scott, thank you for everything you did for all of us, for boats, for safety, for clean water managements, stocking programs, fishing lures. You did it all, dude. And I am so thankful for that. And I'm sure a lot of the guys that knew who you were are thankful too. That's all I got today, guys, to Ray Scott. Thank you very much. May the Father bless you and keep in Yeshua's name, and as always, fish on.